You are listening to Chaos Springs Eternal, a Delta Green actual play, brought to you by Quartermasters of the Tabletop. This is Season 1, City of Woe. Delta Green, by its nature, deals with violent themes and disturbing imagery, as well as horrors beyond our comprehension. Now, if you're one of those people who don't mind comprehending some horrors from time to time, I think you'll have a good time listening here. Join us, won't you? So my kid, my older kid plays baseball, right? Mm -hmm. And so yesterday we were like, hey, I'll take you out because we got a a little park Mm -hmm. with a Mm -hmm. uh, retaining pond near our house. Okay. And so I was like, hey, look, I'll take you to the retaining pond because, I mean, it's like a, it's like probably 10, 11, 12 foot deep. Um, And let's go hit some balls because it's big enough that, and he's not, you know, (laughs) I mean, he's no major league baseball player. He's. You know, nine. So I was like, well, okay, let's go play. I mean, I, I was throwing some. Be the next paper. Oh gosh, yeah. I, I would hope so. That'd be great if he could make all the money, and then I just get to be like his manager or like uh, you know, someone who just. That's every parent's You want a Disney there. child after it? I you understand it. Full, no, you want notice a full you Britney didn't. Spears you didn't say without the drug use. <laughs> full <laughs> Britney Spears. Full, full Justin Amanda Bynes. <laughs> So, but here, here's the thing. So I'm throwing, you know, and I mean, he's gets some decent hits off, which is, the, you know, the whole point. He's, he, he's played for a few mm-hmm, years now. Mm-hmm. He can hit the ball. Um, and, you know, we're, we're maybe 30, 40 pitches in and he sends this ball that Whoa. rockets straight to me. <laughs> and I have a gloved hand and an, uh, and an ungloved hand. And my brain was just like, oh, protect yourself. So I, you know, brought my, my hands in but my pointer finger on my ungloved Mm -hmm. hand made contact with that ball and i mean it just it was like the dead center of the ball hit that pointer finger and it just like jammed it all the way in oh man still that'll hurt hurt for three weeks bad yep i mean yep i i am playing injured right now this is this is my flu game (laughs) Uh, and like my voice game. is still recovering. Oh, my oh come God. off it. The best thing is that you compared yourself to Michael Jordan. <laughs> Did I, well, and I mean, it's actually worse because not only do I have this jam finger. It's worse? It, not only do I have this jam finger, which, by the way, is my is my left button mouse oh, clicking no. finger. Oh, um, oh no. Okay, also... My kid had the game Monday and Wednesday, and I lost my voice at the game Monday, and I didn't learn my lesson Wednesday. So my voice is still <laughs> recovering for this audio medium that we are recording. So I would I would submit that this is bigger, bigger than the, than flu, the game. flu game. <laughs> this is bigger than the flu game. So I didn't have to worry about two this separate like, ailments. <laughs> yeah. This is like if, if Michael Jordan had the flu and sprained his ankle. <laughs> yeah. My God. This... McNuggets literally just went. Yeah, this McNuggets literally just went. I am better than the very skilled man as an unskilled, semi injured white dude who plays <laughs> games <laughs> online. I therefore I'm not, I, listen. In the realm, in the realm of playing Delta Green, I I would argue that I am. You know, I may not be Michael Jordan, but I would play on the yeah, bowls, uh-huh. right? I, I, I You'd could be Tony Kukoc. You're good. I, oh gosh, Trench. <laughs> <laughs> that is almost more insulting than that what I said cut. comparing myself to Michael Jordan. <laughs> that was the deepest cut I've ever heard in my entire life. <laughs> uh, the, let's be, Tens let's be of honest. People are laughing. I'm more that security guard that was in that that uh, uh, documentary. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh. oh. Tony Kukoc had right. a good career. I don't know why you're mad about that. Yeah. I'm not. <laughs> you were the guy behind it. the camera who recorded Jordan crying. You could be BJ Armstrong. <laughs> I, see, I don't even know that one, Drench. That's, <laughs> I'm trying to think. I'm. I mean, Bill Cartwright. I'm more like. Uh, I'm more like Tracy McGrady. I think we go. I got to go from Houston, right? Mm-hmm. Um, Tracy McGrady. The magic. I mean, he just. He, uh, yeah, he listen. He did his greatest work as a rocket, though, right? That's true. That's true. And what was his greatest work? His greatest work was just uh, the thirteen points in like five yeah, seconds. He scored thirteen points in thirty seconds. Or something. Oh gosh, just ridiculous. Uh, as a feature, just, just absolute... am I crazy or does this feel like some real inside baseball well, shit right now? Uh, as a Hoosier, it's, this is our episode one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I was gonna say this is actually getting used for like. Uh, 
sound bites for various things. Uh, right. Tony Kukoc was on the 72 and 10 team. So, I mean, was, that's a good, good pull. Yeah. There you go. As, as the resident Hoosier, who should know all the baseball stuff, as soon as we left Michael Jordan, uh, this was, as far as I'm concerned, you guys are speaking Turkish. <laughs> like well, I only remind... remember them because I watched them growing yeah. up because we... they played the Bad Boy Pistons all the time. Can we can <laughs> we change this into like football or hockey names by chance? Then I'm like 100 percent there. Well, you you okay. lose me on hockey. The Mario Lemieux is the only thing I know about hockey. Wayne Gretzky. I, I am like the Eddie Belfour of hockey. I am the Patrick. Wah Wait, you're the of... Eddie Belfour of you mean you're the Eddie Belfour of uh, Delta Green. Uh, no, I'm, I'm, sorry, I'm Yeah, I'm the Eddie Belfour of Delta Green. Okay, I understand now. All right, we're here. I'm here. Yeah. Anyways. All right. Um, <laughs> what a <laughs> what a what a start. What an opening. Our first banter is going to be tits. Yeah. What a cold opening. Uh, yeah. I, this I, will I, be interesting to edit. <laughs> I was going to share. Uh, my only baseball experience growing up was being forced to run super hard until it felt like my heart was going to explode. And then uh, walking around in the outfield with one of my uh, good friends and just kicking up as much dust as possible. Oh, yeah. Oh, I, Cars, they still do that today. Yep. I hurt myself playing t-ball. That's oh. my baseball experience. Uh, mm. In a practice warm-up thing, throwing the ball back in the fourth with the coach's son, and I threw it and busted his nose wide the fuck open, and I thought <laughs> I was dead. I thought I was going to die because he didn't catch the fucking ball. <laughs> Well, that's really. I thought that <laughs> I thought I was like going to get kicked off the team, which at the at, in the moment I was like, "Oh yes, finally I'm out, I'm free." <laughs> so, uh, but uh, okay, at the at the top, let's let's go from the top because this is probably going to be the intro for a lot of mm -hmm. people to Quartermasters of the Tabletop, our new yeah. podcast endeavor. Mm -hmm. um, so, I, I wanted to take a few minutes to explain just uh who we are and what what we're aiming to be because this is not i would say it's not a novel but uh it, it's not a novel creation in terms of other people have also you know put out podcasts where they run multiple different systems but no we're the first um, i think our aim yeah okay we, we are the first well we're the only christian one. Oh, um, okay hang on. Really <laughs> <doing that. laughs> the uh <laughs> Uh, you know, the only Christian tabletop RPG podcast where we switch systems and GMs. Um, <laughs> but so, you know, I'm McNuggets and I will be running the Delta Green. So the Delta Green uh, show is going, it has the general name of Chaos Springs Eternal, right? So this is Quartermasters of the Tabletop presents Chaos Springs Eternal. And this is season one, which is um city of woe and that's the this is the the story that we're going to tell so it's a homebrew delta green campaign it, the idea is to take mm -hmm. this from day one to you guys are you know fully immersed in the unnatural and things are going to get real wild and real weird and you're going to uncover some crazy things some absolutely out of this world things and we're hopefully going to have a lot of fun and uh, I, I think also at the top for my show, I wanted to give a straight up, hey, the four of us have played together now for, what, two years, three years? Oh, easily, easily almost four. Yeah. Almost I, four. I, I, yeah. Almost yeah, four Yeah, I've years. known cars for coming on seven. Yeah. yeah. And so we have, in the course of those four years, we have... Um, learned a lot of things about each other and we've tabletop. learned to hate each other deeply mm -hmm. yeah. we all deeply despise each deeply other hate yeah. each other uh, really the fact almost as much as we that we're even attempting this is astonishing this is basically uh the equivalent of going to like marriage counseling and they're like well you know you guys have to sleep in the same bed again and it'll kind yeah, of get so over it <laughs> this is more of us <laughs> attempting an open marriage to solve the problems that we have yeah. uh, you know, it's more like <laughs> us having kids <laughs> oh, now, now we're to stuck. solve the problems we're like ah oh, fuck now we can't leave <laughs> yeah now we're stuck we're completely stuck yeah so we've got a podcast baby together we're gonna make it work until it's 18 yeah and then we're gonna so, hate each other and berate each other <laughs> yep that's and it. one of us is a soundboard of just fart effects <laughs> <laughs> that said um <laughs> there are i mean like 
we kind of understand the the lines and stuff so there are going to be very dark things explored in city of woe um there's going to be you know straight up there's going to be violence there's going to be um deeply disturbing things uh i i will try i i think i'll put in sort of the podcast notes themselves maybe some more specifics because if you have those sorts of triggers you know I want you to have access to that sort of thing, but also I don't want to put them up front and say like, Hey, trigger warning, um, you know, something specific happens that then would maybe spoil something for someone who isn't really as concerned about that sort of thing. So just want to put out that out there that the, the deep and dark and disturbing things that happen to these players or that these players um, come upon, that's something that, you don't have to. I, I don't think you have to worry about cars or drench or ting. By the way, I'm McNuggets. We've got ting ting cars and drench. The four of us have played again for for coming on four years now uh, across you know Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, we've played we played a little five e. We played a lot of Pathfinder. Uh, we've played what other games have we played? Drench. Uh, we've played Mork Borg. We've played um, Power Rangers. Pathfinder Two. Power Rangers. Power Rangers, yeah. Rangers Power Rangers. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, Delta Green, of course. We've had a we Delta played, Green campaign prior to this yeah. that we Delta Green. What? It was the greatest campaign Vampire I've ever the been mass, part of. Mass, of the rest grade. We did play yeah. VTM, yeah, a I little bit. A little bit of VTM. Yeah. Uh, Warhammer, yeah. Warhammer Fantasy. That was yes. Yes. session of that. Um, yeah, we've played a lot of different stuff, so I mean, we're pretty accomplished, yeah. I would say. Yeah. yeah, and so the idea is that You'll be listening to, you know, Chaos Springs Eternal in whatever seasons that we run. But we're also going to be playing, recording, producing games from each one of us. Um, mm-hmm. I figured to give just a brief opportunity for uh, let's go drench cars ting just because that's the order you're in in this Discord chat. Uh, just a little hey, here's what we're gonna play. Uh, maybe couple sentences about the why did you tell them that now they're not going to know that we all just sit around the same table in real life (laughs) (laughs) yeah um so i'm drench thunderman and uh that's my handle and i am going to be running a pathfinder slash blades in the dark game for oh that sounds awful and cannot work yeah that's what reddit had to say about it but we're gonna make it work we're just gonna slam the two together like it's a hot night in Spain and we'll just make it work. All right. I have cars, high uh, cars you, you attempted to <laughs> escape, but I'm going to call you out cars. Go ahead. Oh, I'm Carzoni. I go by he, him pronouns. I am for this uh, cast. I'm going to be running Lancer. No room for a wallflower. The uh, first narrative campaign that Lancer put out run by um, or written mostly by, I believe, uh, the designers of Lancer who had a heavy hand in it. And I'm very excited to run it for these truck fucks. Yeah, it looks cool. It will be my first time running a Lancer game, but I've been playing in one for a bit and heavily enjoy it. My uh, proficiencies lie mostly with Pathfinder and Pathfinder 2E, but uh, I'm down to expand to Lancer. Very excited. It's a really fun system. All right. And Ting, could you please? Yes. Uh, my username is Ting Ting Depanda. I just go by Ting Ting Ting. Tyler doesn't matter. You know, pick your poison. I will be running a fifth edition game. More specifically, I will be running a homebrew fifth edition spelljammer campaign. Um, a little uh, open universe, I guess. A little beyond just an open world, but kind of just an open. Uh, let these three idiots kind of sail around the Flagistan. Uh, murder hoboing and all the various awful things they're going to inevitably get into. Uh, I'm very excited for that. And I'm sure it will be uh, an absolute dumpster fire. Like everything else I run. <laughs> oh, don't say that. Is no. it, I mean, it's, <laughs> what I'm saying is like, should we, should we just like tell people our names? Cause is it weird that we're going by our handles? We know each other as Drench. Like, when you tell, hey, say, Drench, I know that you're talking to me. But the people out there don't know that. Like, they don't know that I'm Drench Thunderman. 
also known as Mark. Yeah, explain to my father, but I play with three people named Drench Thunderman, yeah. McNuggets, yep. and Tink Tink to Panda. Yeah, was that, was the, best, yes. that was the greatest the thing. thing because uh, McNuggets gave us all a beautiful, beautiful Christmas gift in a Christmas ornament with all of our yeah. handles and the podcast name on it. Mm-hmm. And I put it up on the Christmas tree. And all my family are like, who in God's name is Drench Thunderman, McNuggets, and a Carzioni? <laughs> <laughs> and why yeah, is it, it up good. next yeah, to I'm the baby Jesus right now. I uh, <laughs> <laughs> on the Christmas tree? Again, again, the only <laughs> Christian uh, right. tabletop rotation uh-huh. game mastering podcast. 100% Christian. Yep. Uh, yeah, here's the thing, Drench. I agree with you. Um, I am never going to remember because I have just called you guys Drench Cars and, know. and Ting yeah. for so long. How am I gonna? But I think people gonna get that right. Actually, want to have names? Yeah, names that they can attach themselves to. Like, I will still call you McNuggets, but okay. yeah. But we all know his real all name right. is. I there. I made it easier. Dan. Yes, everyone knows my name is Jeffrey. My name Jeff. My name Jeff. My name I can go by that anyone can refer to me as, uh, preferably not like your first time meeting me, uh, Noah. I go by Noah. I've heard a lot of boat jokes, so if you think you're original and you come out with a boat joke, I will look at you with a very dejected face. Okay. Sorry, I have, no, I've heard Noah, Dan, Mark, Ting, I'm sorry. I, You're going to have to change your name to something biblical if we're going to maintain the Christian podcast. Uh, well, well, hang on. I'm trying to think. Uh, is Graham a, a biblical say, name? Graham? Is it? Graham? Graham is an English name that I don't believe has any root in anything yeah, but biblical. Like, let's be real. <laughs> Mark isn't exactly the most biblical sounding name. I'm a whole guy. Oh, come on. Yeah. But Ting, you have you have the uh, the lineage backwards. The reason that... Mark doesn't sound biblical is because we took it from the Bible and then used it. Yeah, I understand. Right. And now this. it doesn't yeah, sound biblical. Right. Yeah, I under I understand this. Also, I'm pretty sure they call them like Marcus. <laughs> yeah, it's probably like Marcus. Yeah, something along those lines. No. Uh, yeah, I guess I guess I will have to change. I have to legally change my name away from Tyler to something like I don't know. Like, what's a really cool like biblical name that like not that's not like a Noah or something like that. Uh, Jesus. Or, no. Methuselah. Oh, I don't want Methuselah. Mm, that's a pretty good one, but I'm, I don't know. I want something that like. Okay. Uh, no, I know someone in real life Ezekiel. named Malachi. Ezekiel. Dear Lord. Oh, Malachi's a good Malachi's name. Malachi's a good name. Malachi's a good name. I was going to say Maher Shalal Hashbaz because yep. that's what Isaiah has to name his kid that he has a prostitute. That he has with a prostitute. Nebuchadnezzar is always out there. Nebuchadnezzar is uh, great. Judas? Judas, that's mm, a. No. I, interesting. You know what? There's at least. I, one Judas that isn't bad. Yeah, in the Bible. I feel like I'm the bad one. So yeah, I'll take Judas. Pilot. <laughs> no, All right. Uh, my real name is Tyler, as I mentioned in my intro. Oh, it, like scrapes at the ears are so unbiblical. It's it's Shut so up. awful. It is just <laughs> horrible. Uh, actually, I what what's this article coming across my email? Uh, this is a new <laughs> scroll oh discovered my God. from a, okay. from oh they they kept digging in the Dead Sea Scrolls they found one more the Gospel of Tyler yeah. what what <laughs> imagine that um Ima- just imagine that amazing. for five seconds uh, I would amazing. lose my mind especially if it's spelt like <laughs> mine because my name's spelled with an I instead of a Y like I would lose it hmm. I would feel so vindicated monster yeah <laughs> I would feel so vindicated for all the years of being bullied in school be like eh, your name spells tiller I'm like eh, yeah shut it anyway all right so let's get started should we I was kind of having fun I was kind of having okay. fun just uh um, you know shooting the shit but I know we're just we're just pushing this off but I would really like I I know I've read this to y'all before but I I want to give this sort of fresh to the podcast listeners yes um so the day after a hurricane has a certain feel. It's a, it's a vibration in the air. Some people talk about the air being still, but that's not quite true. It, it's a contrast effect. It's what exists in the aftermath of the whipping wind of the storm wall. The vibration, as if all the higher forms of life are taking short, slow breaths to make sure the world is still real around them. The world clothed in the leavings of rain and wind is still. The morning after follows a similar pattern to every morning after a hurricane. People emerge from their houses to assess the damage and begin the process of mourning. 
For some, it's mourning is a loss of things, trees, vehicles, sheds out back, anything that was in the elements that was there the day before, but has been uprooted, swept away, or sometimes just taken. For others, the mourning is for loss of home entirely, blown down by winds or so flooded as to be an all too common misery. Those who mourn most mourn for the loss of life, of loved ones who never returned home, caught in the storm surge, or those who refuse to leave home when asked to evacuate. There are other deaths in a hurricane, ones where bodies are never recovered, and so it's assumed that they were lost to the sea, swept away on white foaming horses to sleep in the gulf. This assumption provides small comfort to the mourning who never get to know the closure of a farewell, yet this unknowing is a cosmic kindness for some. If they knew the true fate of their loved ones, they would see death as a far more kind ending. From overhead, we see a field swampy and brown, pools of murky water with some cypress trees still yet standing in the humid morning air, lit by beams of sun burning the mists away. There's a sound, quiet at first, then louder, a wet, crunching sound. And then there, right under the tree, we see it. Something human, no, humanoid. The thing is squatted down on its legs next to a bloated great corpse, and the thing's pink flesh hangs loosely from a bony frame. Its face is hidden, buried deep in the body's ribcage, and suddenly there's a wet, crunching spray, a thunderous finale as it draws its extended dog-like face out, and in its mouth it holds a bloody trophy, a heart. It lopes away on all fours, jaunting through puddles and over tree limbs, stopping only to tear a bite from its prize. So that's where we're at uh, to begin with. But a little bit back, because this this story takes place uh, after that. Um, you all have been summoned to the mayor's office. Um, you all find yourselves south of Park Road at a crosswalk. Uh, it is Friday afternoon. Maybe a, a brief description now might work. Uh, age, general you know, features, that sort of thing. Yeah. So Cyril is like probably six foot, maybe six one on a good day. Um, He is not an overly large man. He is kind of skinny, um, doesn't have a whole lot of muscle mass to him, but he is tall and he looks hearty. Um, He's got a strong jaw. He's always got like a five o'clock shadow happening. Um, he's got dark black hair and blue striking blue eyes. And he is always wearing kind of like a t-shirt or like a long sleeve, like maybe three quarter length kind of button down shirt that, and suspenders. He's always wearing, um, suspenders that hold up just kind of nice dress slacks and nice dress shoes. Um, got, he's not, he looks rugged, but he's not like super hefty or anything but yeah he's very uh very and a very attractive man i would say tyler what about uh what about joel yeah he's in his uh, his he's in his uh late 20s to early 30s um he's probably you know around five eight five nine um not out of shape but he's not like thin by any stretch of the imagination so he has a bit of a beer belly going he does have some some muscle mass due to working uh, on cars all day long. Uh, but he has his hair slicked back right now um, since he is being a little more professional at the moment. Uh, and he has a finely trimmed mustache, just mustache, no uh, strawberry blonde hair almost. And uh, he is currently driving up in his uh souped up nissan 350 that he's uh probably way too proud of and he's also wearing just an old band t-shirt uh and jeans nothing fancy whatsoever excellent Excellent. no what about marcy marcy hestegath is a 24 year old woman with auburn hair and she mainly wears a kind of like denim blazer that is adorned with various pins that show off her interests um mainly in like some comics some like mathematic symbols just so like she's kind of a bit of a geek uh some some media for some show she's into or something 
Uh, primarily, she wears her hair up in a ponytail. It's kind of long, kind of medium. She's been meaning to get it cut kind of deal. She wears octagonal glasses that give her an intellectual air. And uh, she is ready to roll out to wherever she needs to get to. I want to know what excuse or um, other reason you gave your boss for why you got this Friday afternoon off. Um, I think Cyril, um, he mm, said that he had to do a photo shoot for um, one of his clients, which is something that happens for the Daily Gator quite often. He prioritizes his self-employment over the Daily Gator. And they're sort of okay with it because he's a good photographer. Reasonable. The Daily Gator, of course, being the town's newspaper. And the town, the town we're in, is care for Louisiana. What about, uh, what about Joel, Tyler? What, what, how did, what, what excuse did Joel get to use uh, to get out of his job on a Friday? Joel works at an auto mechanic shop um working on you know whatever the city's townsfolk need fixing you know oil change you know t- uh changing out tires you know the 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 whole gambit if you will um as for uh how he got the afternoon off he works early in the morning and he just kind of gets off in the afternoon he gets off right around now anyway so he just uh he gets yeah off, he gets off. Off hey what's the hey what's real quick what's the name of this uh mechanic shop do you, do you remember I don't off the top of my head hang on let me uh pull up my sheet I believe i have it wrote down this is important in fact you might say it's kind of a big wheel that's right <laughs> kind of a big wheel yes classic uh, there's good. but no, yeah, right, he's so just off. Joel, Joel yeah, the font. Joel's just he's he didn't have to get anything off. He maybe had to lead work a half hour early, but nothing crazy. All right, and uh, uh, Noah, what about Marseille, aka Marcy Hestegath? Well, uh, she, I believe we discussed. She basically works for herself. Uh, mostly, she's a web admin, so she just kind of paused on what she was working on and. Uh, Whoever she was working on it for told them that uh, something came up and she will be right back working on it. Just just give her until uh, the afternoon and she'll get right back onto it. Excellent. Excellent. So, like I said, you've you've been summoned uh, to the mayor's office. Uh, this um, came to you from your boss at the Phantom Finders. Um who is um, related to one of you, is related to Joel. Um, Yeah, uh, Clementine. Clementine. She is working, um, and she works actually uh, at the uh, head, she's the head editor at the Daily Gator, so she knows uh, Joel, and she knows Cyril. So, just wanted to uh, remind you of that. Having been summoned to the mayor's office, you all find yourselves on the south side of Park Avenue at a crosswalk. Nearby, a telephone pole is plastered with a variety of posters in different colors. Yellow, green, blue, white. Recently reposted after the storm, you noticed. You're headed north to the middle section of town where government buildings in the town's park lay like an oversized median between Main Street to the north and Park to the south. Uh, The light turns red and walk signs line up and a percussive tone sounds giving you the all clear really quick. We're going to make our first roll. Everyone make a, just a, just a D 100 roll here in uh, uh, roll 20. Just a basic roll. Just a basic roll. (laughs) Okay. All right. (laughs) Interesting. Nice. Go ahead and uh, go ahead. Oh, go ahead and call those out. (laughs) I rolled a 55. Uh I got a 98 and I got an 86. <laughs> so it's killing it. D- very. Yeah. This is an, that's an interesting spread of roles and that makes my decision very hard. Um, <laughs> but I, I had it in my notes. I had in my notes what to do. So uh, Marcy, you step out first. And as you do, uh, you are nearly hit by uh, by a car that you didn't see. 
Uh, it's a, I mean, it's blazing through and it, it runs that red light. It's a lifted pink Jeep uh, that blasts through the red light and makes its way west just past uh, where you can follow it where Maine and Park rejoin on the other side of uh, City Hall. Oh, boy. Yeah. Uh, but you, you cross and uh, after you enter City Hall, you pushing past uh, lighted doors framed in brass accents. I've got that up in roll 20. That's uh, what you can look at. In, inside City Hall, there's a smell like mothballs and old paper and everyone doing their best to look as busy as possible on a Friday afternoon. Uh, and you make your way up and around to uh, following the signs and maybe asking for directions. Uh, you find yourself uh, outside the mayor's office. And uh, on the outside of the mayor's office, there's a woman at a desk. Um, she has a name plaque. It's Matilda Green. She's a slender, tall woman with fair skin and light colored hair. She's typing away at her computer as you walk around the side of the hall uh, where the mayor's office is located. Um if you strain and listen, you might hear some muted conversation on the other side of his door. Um, Matilda looks up and she says, uh, yes, uh, may I help you? Yes. Hello, Shogo. We have, uh, we have an appointment with the mayor. Appointment, appointment. She taps through her computer. She says, uh, uh, let's see. looks like I've got a three o'clock for the phantom finders. Is that, is that, that is correct. That's us. Okay, and uh, there are uh, only two chairs, which are across from the desk, which she motions to, uh, barely looking up from her typing as she does. Marcy quickly uh, sits down in the first one. Excellent. Do either of you take the other one? <laughs> Joel is uh, probably a little too amped up and uh, looking into like the reflection of his cell phone like trying to make sure his hair's all uh, in order and looking uh, presentable, as presentable as possible. All right. Well, I think Cyril stays at the desk and he says, my, that's cool. That's quite the green dress you got on there. It was, uh, it's uh, a very lovely color on you. Uh, she looks up and says, oh, thanks. Uh, and continues typing. Who's the who's in there with the mayor right now? Uh, she says, oh, no one. She, he's on a phone call right now. Oh, interesting. And he will try to listen at the, like, try to pick up stuff that's happening in there. Uh, do you approach the door or are you going from where you are? I think he, he would stand casually by the door. Okay. Um, go ahead and uh, I'll tell you what, there are. Because you, as you look around, the, you would notice that the walls are adorned with uh, plaques and pictures from the town's history. There's even sure, sure. a portrait of the current mayor, um, uh, Thaddeus Babineau. Uh, he's a middle-aged man. He's got a, he wears a stern expression. Uh, so maybe while you're, you're studying those, um, you can get a little bit closer. And you could make a, you could make a what do you say, alertness or um, in search? Yeah, probably alertness. Or search either you pick. Uh, well, I'll tell you what. Alertness I feel is more for things. I, I feel like I should be the one who calls for alertness roles. Um, okay. That's g just generally reading the the skill in Delta Green. That that's sort of what I get. So give me a search. That's a fail. Yeah, I mean it's just too too muted, and uh, she's giving you the side eye as you try and like approach the door. Uh, so I think it, it's just just hard to to see or maybe you're really interested in some of the town's history but yeah it, it takes a, a few more minutes uh, of waiting uh you're you're sort of well into like 307 309 that that sort of thing where it's you know the mayor's more important than any of you so he can take as long as he wants before meeting with you and anything else y'all want to do in this pre-meeting time uh marcy would like to get up and try to see if uh what was her name again? I apologize. Uh, Matilda. Matilda has anything on her desk and try to look over it. Has she is uh, coming up to try to feign conversation with her over uh, what the mayor's opinion on her latest project for him was, how it turned out. Uh, she is typing away. And so, you know, like standing at the uh, front of her desk, not fully going behind her desk, like a psychopath. <laughs> 
Yeah, no, she's still just <laughs> typing away uh, very intensely. Notification. I mean, on her desk, you notice her name plaque. She's got, uh, you know, the standard, you know, sort of mail in and out, um, a big calendar uh, with just a, a handful of like notes of um, not so much. It doesn't look like meetings, but it looks like important uh, days are sort of circled. Um, it seems like mayor out of office, you'd notice um, maybe like, a, you know, lunch meeting type of thing okay. uh, would be noted, but not like full days. Um, just, just that sort of thing. And she is very deep in her work. So you can kind of survey her desk uh, bef before she would notice. Um, actually, let me see. This is where I would be like, Oh, she needs to roll an alertness. Okay. Let's see what she, Oh, yep. She passes. So she, uh, after, after a few seconds, she looks up, she's like, Oh, um, can, can I help you? Uh, yes. Hello. Uh, it's Marcy. Uh, has the mayor said anything in regards to, um, the little project he has me, uh, cooking up for him? Uh, and, uh, sorry, what project is that Marcy? It's, it's some advertising work for his reelection platform. Some like, Oh, 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 the, the, the web oh the the web campaign the uh the yeah let me let me uh i i don't know let's see he uh and she like tabs through a bunch of things I, they're just like mock mock like just some mock-ups i just wanted to make sure if he uh, had looked at them yet she says uh well yes i, th I think he was good with putting you i you know, no you know we're meeting about it next monday uh to to make the final decision before uh you know deciding to to move forward so okay okay uh you'll you'll know monday Wonderful, wonderful. Thank you so much. No problem. Uh, did I see anything interesting on her desk while during that conversation, or just what you described? Um, I don't know. Is there is there something like specific you'd want to know? Uh, yeah, that just you could like find on a desk. It, uh, if I can get a view of the, like the calendar with any greater detail, or is it just like what you said, the most basic? Like he's out of the office for these days. Um. Yeah. There, she doesn't. It doesn't look like she keeps a lot of specifics. Uh, there, but you would notice that uh, it looks like maybe if you paid a little more attention, it looks like they he has a standing Thursday lunch appointment. Okay, um, you, you notice that 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 gets kind of blocked out. Uh, it doesn't say what; it's just like lunch in uh, red letters. Okay, okay, yeah, I think that's all she would notice then. Uh, after a cup, after a couple of minutes, um, Joel getting impatient is just like where the hell is clementine she said she was going to be here on time this time right around there uh the the mayor opens his door and says uh, ah <laughs> hello phantom finders uh come on in come on in we go in oh okay uh it, do, is do you have any way to contact clementine is is her phone working now or oh uh, uh clementine said that she uh she was sending y'all that uh she was more of the uh, coordinator and that y'all were the, uh, oh, to, to put it nicely, grunts uh, who, who do the, the work. She's more of an administrative type. Well, that sounds like Clementine. Uh, yeah, sounds like yes. her not telling us anything either. Uh, yes. Yep. Yes. Well, uh, to be fair, and he, he continues motioning you in. Uh, he's got, you know, several, three, three or four chairs in his office that, that y'all could take. And he uh, makes his way back around his desk. He's got, you know, plenty of photos up on the wall, lots of, you know, shaking hands, kissing babies type of things. He's got a nice wood desk and little, he doesn't have a computer on it. Um, he's a little more old school, but uh, again, calendar, that sort of stuff. But uh, as he sits down, he, he reclines, he uh, unbuttons the top button. He's, he's wearing uh, just a, you know, sort of a blue uh, checked shirt with a tie. The, undoes his top button, loosens his tie a little bit. And he says, uh, well, it's all, almost a uh, quit in time, but uh, I'm, I'm happy that Joel were able to make this meeting with me. And sorry that it's on uh, relatively short, uh, short notice. It's, it's our pleasure, Mayor. What's going on? Um, real, real quick. Uh, you you all you all know me correct i i mean you, i we've this town is you know not exceptionally big I, I believe i've met you joel and and cyril and and marcy um in fact uh you know joel i'm i'm fairly good acquaintances with uh, clementine and uh she and i you know as 
editor of the the newspaper, she and I have had to have plenty of interactions, and I think it's mostly uh, mostly good. I would hope. Uh, I can't say any of us have said anything mean about you, for sure. Well, thank thank you. I I'm not a man without flaws, but I, I try and I mean I've I've done well for the town, I believe, and I, I care about this town. That uh, that's this, what I'm what I'm bringing you in here for is is not strictly, um, I, I would say it's not strictly something that's under my mayoral duties. In fact, it, it's 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 a little bit selfish. But uh, I, could could you, if you would permit me to be selfish, um, I have a, a bit of a proposition for for you all that might make sense given your side pursuits with uh, the the phantom finders well i don't know about my compatriots here but you've piqued my interest man what's up well here's the deal my my great aunt recently passed away and she she left me her house now this house is from what i understand it's fairly large it's it's on the very outskirts of town um and his, there are rumors that there's a, a group from out of town that's looking to acquire the land. And Louisiana government being what it is, and, and I say this as a member of a local Louisiana government, they they may just, they, they'll be able to get it unless the house possesses some historical significance and we can get it classified under a special protection under the state. So, so what I need y'all to do is, is find something, anything, that makes it look like, you know, there are some spirits or haunts in the house. Something that would make it significant enough to preserve. Uh, he leans back in his chair and steeples his fingers. Of course, I'm not asking you to perpetrate any sort of fraud. I, I do. There are rumors and you know, beliefs that, that my great aunt had that this place was, in fact, haunted. It, in fact, maybe with her death, she has joined the spirits there. Of course, I'm willing to compensate you per your usual fees um, for your services. And if you can pull this off, it would be a great help to me. And and the town and myself would be indebted to you. Um, he, again, you know, waits for your response. And glint in his eyes, suggesting that he knows this is somewhat of an unusual request. So usually people want us to prove that the house is not haunted. And now you want us to prove that the house is haunted? That, that would be the goal, yes. And what, what other than you think some of your aunt thought the house was haunted, is there anything else that you can tell us about the house itself? Well, the house is old. It dates back to uh, the, the early 1900s. Uh, it's a bit of a manor, to be honest. Um, and... From what I know, it uh, it's it's just been in her family for that whole time. I don't think she. I think she was a little girl who grew up in it, and uh, she held it and and then willed it to me, seeing that she had no descendants of her own. Um, and uh, me and me and uh, my brother and Antoine, our, our intentions were to rebuild the house, uh, make it something you know, something that we could maybe take out on the weekends just she's got a nice bit of land around it too uh so this would this would cover not only the house itself but the the land it was on interesting it wasn't i mean it's it was built in the 19 early 1900s so no it wasn't a plantation home or anything like that no no nothing nothing of that nature is anyone buried on the property that you know of oh there may be some bodies on the property i can't say if i know for sure but uh well sometimes these deep south people they like to bury their their kin all around them yes i'm, I'm sure most of the i mean she was buried in the city cemetery uh so why uh, i can't say for sure uh what she might have there i will say our track record for proving things weren't haunted has been uh exceptionally well um th this may be a bit of a difficulty Yes, but but y'all have, I, I uh, Clementine showed me some of your uh, productions mm -hmm. uh, over on that TV station uh, down south, 
and uh, you know, just anything of, of that nature, I think, uh, would be enough for us to get it classified um, with the state as as of historical or otherwise significant. I see. Well, I would be more than honored to try and keep this uh, beautiful city as intact as possible, Mayor. That, that's all I'm saying. And, and Joel, I know, given your history with the town, that that may be something that you uh, uh, you take a, a special interest in as well. Of course, of course. Now, uh, by chance, have you any ideas of uh, any potential sightings that have occurred? Anything that... Uh, your family has brought up at all? Oh, well, you know, my, my great aunt used to say that, uh, the, the manor itself was, was haunted. Um, it, it actually is, is, it has its own name. It's uh, a Florissant manor. Um, it's, of course they, my family being what it is, keeping a French name, um, uh, she she said that from time to time you could hear you know the piano playing when no one was at the piano you know the chandelier might swing uh, just you know standard haunts of that sort gotcha nothing too out of the ordinary then when it comes to uh <clears throat> our field exactly and you know uh whatever it is that you may find uh even if it's not been described by my uh, dear great aunt, uh, I think uh, I would be willing to accept as evidence and proof in the full. Now, Maya, you know that we do productions. You want a full scale production on this one? Like you want us with the video and the EFs and all that stuff? I mean, we can do that. Oh, sure. Yes. I would love it if you could get something uh, put up on that Saturday morning program down at WCLA. That uh, something that, you know, would be recorded in their archives and that I could request a copy of. That would be excellent. Any sort of evidence that we could uh, attach with this uh, submission for in places of historical note would be uh, would be great and w- would expedite the process. At, at least getting this uh would it help us get ahead of any uh, sort of asset seizures that they might do with the house and land in regards to development and that sort of thing? Uh, far, far be it from me to uh, question why you're doing this, but um, ha- is there any of that going on currently, sir? And Well, well there, there are rumors, like I said, that there is some... Uh, corporation or uh, other conglomerate that's attempting to acquire some land outside of care for. Uh, again, this is uh, strictly on the down low. This is my friend at the state government who just uh, called to give me a heads up that I may want to, uh, you know, take an interest in, in uh, my great aunt's ah. house before sooner rather than later. Um, May, if you don't mind my saying, this seems like an awful, we're going about this kind of cattywampus. I don't, there's got to be a better way to prove that this house is historical other than it being haunted. I mean, it was built in the early 1900s. Just that alone would make it a historical home. You would hope so. And and that may be enough. Don't, don't get me wrong, but anything that might separate the, the floor zone manor from, all the other houses out in that the outskirts of town um, w- would be excellent, and and you know this this may be for nothing, but this is just just again I'm asking this as a, a personal favor for me. No, oh, no, I appreciate that. We're, we're willing to do it. I just I want to make sure that you will go in every avenue you can on this one, and try to get it because you know we can produce this program and we'll do what we do, but. We can't guarantee that it's going to, you know, get you what you want. So I'd be looking at other avenues as well, because I know those corporate types that try to take all the land they can. Uh, yes. But when you get out there, you'll 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 see that the the mansion really does have a, a bit more work to be done, uh, something that that might take a little bit of time. So even if we transform it into a place where we can go visit or, or an Airbnb, uh, it, it will take some time and money, which, you know, myself and, and Antoine yeah. are, are quite busy. So uh, anything that, that if we could turn that around, you know, in a couple of weeks, we could have that in with the state and we'd have a business going there. And there there would be no way that they could uh, justify that. Ah. Uh. 
if there's any other uh, information you have on potential um, ancestors who uh, may have passed there, or uh, any notable figures who came through there, we can we can certainly provide that during our programming as well. Well, of course, I can get you some of uh, the details of my great aunt's uh, family, but I, again, I don't know of any specific spirits or haunts. And he looks at y'all and sort of, you know, puts a finger to his nose and says, uh, but, you know, I, I understand. Y'all do what you must, of course. Feel free to add as much color to the story as, as you will. We're, we're, I believe we're all very clear on the intention, Mayor. It's fine. But I meant if there was any uh, guests that she had that are uh, big wigs that other people might recognize, certain popular names, any notable uh, people who held office at any point, that type of thing. Well, you know, I, I'm the first from the family to go into uh, public service. Um, she she had lived in the house since she was a little girl, so I, I don't know, know exactly, uh, you know, what what her parents did to uh, to to amass their their money but uh suffice to say that uh i think uh there are very few famous people uh, and i think that she mostly rode the coattails of her richer parents ah do you have our permission to look into it ourselves and see if we can find some no oh, sure Any, anything you find that that might uh might create a more intriguing story you you can you can use feel free uh wonderful wonderful can I roll a human on this guy? Yeah, go ahead. Ah, uh, that's an eighteen under sixty. So he he's going through this. He just seems a little bit. He seems a little bit distracted, um, but okay. he seems very straightforward about all of this. But I would say that there, there, you can tell that he's sort of having this conversation with you while also like thinking through something else entirely. Got it. Now, uh. Y'all can tend to that tonight or tomorrow, whenever you'd like. But uh, anyways, I, I must uh, must ask you to, uh, uh, excuse me, I, I do have a meeting here just uh, coming up. So, uh, but uh, if, if uh, uh, Cyril, if, if you could stay behind for just a minute, I do need to, to speak with you privately. Oh, can do, can do. All right, and he uh, ushers. Ushers Joel and uh, Marcy uh, out. As uh, Joel leaves, he smiles and turns and goes to give the mayor a, a handshake and says, uh, Mayor, if there are any phantoms inside of that house, call them found. <laughs> uh, oh. it's, a, it's a joke, of course. And he uh, walks out. Uh, of course. Th thank you. Thank you. I, I understand. I talked to your um, aide earlier. Um, on Monday, you're looking over my proposal, and I'm uh, happy to hear any notes on it uh, you have around that time. Um, thank you so much, sir. Uh, goodbye. Yes, yes, Marcy. And, uh, you know, what your, your accepting of this job is, is by no means a uh, quid pro quo. I, I tend to judge you, you fairly in, in, uh, against, uh, well, I'll be honest, your scant competition in town. Uh, yes, I'm uh, very excited for the fact that I, there is... Minimal competition in this town for me. Uh, and I uh, price my things fairly. Uh, thank you, sir. Yes, thank you. Uh, and he closes the door behind you, uh, leaving um, just uh, just Cyril and the mayor. And he says, uh, no, he sits back down. He says, Cyril, um, I got an interesting phone call earlier from, uh, from your uncle, Benjamin. Um, as you know, your, your uncle is a, a judge. Uh, and he just, he seemed kind of uh, anxious to speak with me and, and requested a, an urgent uh, dinner meeting tomorrow. Is, is, do you know anything about this? No, I, I mean, other than, you know, my limited dealings with my uncle. But, I mean, my Uncle Benjamin's a good guy. I mean, he's a judge from, from what I, you know. So he's a pretty good guy. I don't know anything else going on with him okay I, I was hoping you had some insight i didn't i didn't want to be caught off guard in in regards to anything that he may have to bring i i can't imagine he's i'm not involved in any court cases or anything like that i don't expect i'm being sued and i don't think he would have that sort of information so it, it came out of the blue um 
for for him to be calling me up uh, so urgently and not willing to speak with me over the phone about what it, whatever it was. He, he insisted that it be a, an in person meeting. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I know nothing. Uh, he he keeps to himself and does his thing, and I do my thing for most part. But I don't. He you know he pretty steady guy from what I remember. No, of, of course, of course. I, I don't. Yeah. But that's scary. I feel you. I mean, you get a call from a judge saying they need me to need to meet you early, or it can be scary, especially for someone in your position. Yeah, I, I just didn't want to be caught on the back foot. So if I could have gained any uh, information from you, I, I needed to to take that advantage of that. Uh, I hope you understand. I'd give it to you if I had a judge. I'd have given it to you, but I ain't got nothing on that. All right. All right. Well, well, thank you again for meeting with me in, in, in both capacities as a, a member of the, the Phantom Fighters and as uh, 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 this this judge's nephew. So, yeah, no problem. No problem. Well, uh, thank you for again. Thank you. And uh, ha- have a have a good rest of your afternoon. Yeah, we'll get this done for you and we'll get this property squared away. So don't you worry about a thing. So. I I look forward to it. I look forward to it. And he um, he motions to the door and says, hey, "You you can you can let yourself out." And uh, immediately hops back on the phone, uh, dialing away. Okay. And Cyril leaves, and he says goodbye to Matilda on the way out, and walks out. She pointedly does not respond. She rolled tough egg that one. Yep. You tried, and that's the important part. I certainly did. So, what do y'all want to do now? Well, I think, fellas, and I think we got to get into our, fellas and lady, I'm, I apology. Um, I think we got to get into our gear and get this done. Oh, um, I'm going to try to throw myself at uh, researching some stuff on the Florasian Manor and any uh, potential uh, stuff we can use for our programming on um, on Saturdays. Uh, hopefully I'll be able to dig up something, and if not, I can always try to spruce it up to be a little more interesting, as our mayor seems to want. And I'll uh, think of some uh, fun flourishes to add to it to make it a little spicier for the viewers, of course. I I guess I can try to rig some EMF stuff to go off when it normally shouldn't, but I, I it, it shouldn't be that hard. No, I mean, we can... If we gotta do EMFs, I think we've already failed. I think we can do some uh, EVPs and, uh, you know, quick edits here and there, shadow people. You know how... Yeah, the usual, yeah. the usual. <laughs> yeah, it shouldn't be that hard. You're right. I think I'll go out there today and just take a look around, take some B footage and just of the exterior. I won't go into building just to get kind of, you know, spooky Louisiana, you know, willow trees covered in Spanish moss, that kind of thing. Ooh, good point. Good idea. All right. Do you, do you want to go solo or, or uh, do the others want to join you? If you would not mind me tagging along i'd love to go maybe i can uh shoot our intro while we're while we have the light yeah let's go scope it out joel we'll figure it out yeah uh i gotta go home pick up a better shirt but yes absolutely mal say you gonna go what library try to figure some stuff out or you gonna internet yeah yeah i'll figure it out i'll I'll probably swing by the library and see if there are any uh hard uh paper format stuff that i can figure out it shouldn't be that all right. Be that difficult. Well, you got our numbers. If you come across anything, I I doubt anything fun will come up, but I'll let you know. Yeah, yeah. I'll be looking for little ends to exploit on that. Oh yeah, you know, like Ronald Reagan lost a shoe there, in, you know, nineteen eighty six. We would need to know about it. A hundred percent. And if at any point you can find anything that links back to uh, the war, and you know, ooh, good point. Yes, anything to do with uh, Louisiana's whole history at the time, that'd be perfect actually kill two birds with one stone all right let's uh let's go first to the library um which is in the middle of the the town so it's probably the easiest to walk to uh as you as you go your separate ways um marcy had a door to the library and cyril and joel uh what, what car are you gonna take i think we'll i mean if joel doesn't have any uh, problems we take his 300 350 oh yeah the joel would be more than happy he'd be like hey man like just uh change the brakes on her you know swapped out 
What is it's it again? A, like, is it like a Datsun 300 or like a, it's a Nissan 350Z? It is a ah uh, yes. It is a dark forest green that he painted himself, and uh, it has various racing liveries along the side of a uh, just random uh like car parts manufacturers. Uh, real real street real street tuner look is what he's what he has going for it. Got it. Okay, is it like a new one or like an older one? Yeah, it is. It is brand new. Okay, great. He is going to be paying this car off for a long time. Long yeah. time. <laughs> this was yeah. This was the stupidest financial decision he has ever made. Taking a note of this, just yeah. <laughs> yep, Leverage for, for later. Every time he is behind the wheel, his like he just has the biggest stupid goof ass smile on his face does he do like stupid shit with the car too like driving a hundred down a dirt road and that kind of stuff uh not down a dirt road no because then the paint job would get dirty i got it no but like you know he absolutely does like dumb stuff like at night when it's quote unquote safer as he would put it got it all right well let's go all right yeah of course uh like i said i gotta go home get a better shirt i can't uh exactly chill for the band quite yet yeah as you to uh plan to to meet back up and and uh perhaps grab some equipment um before heading out uh we we turn to um turn to marcy who has made her way into the library in uh care for by the way uh care for louisiana is it's not a real town it's it's a town that we've invented together with the, the power of our minds um <laughs> it's uh, uh an imaginary town in between you know new orleans and uh the east coast east, east uh, border of houston of uh, not houston of texas mm-hmm. um about an hour north of i10 uh, just just generally and it's it's a big enough town that it has its own library and it has a, a handful of modern trappings um the library in, in uh here is is a uh, it's a uh, locally known as the Bayou Bibliotheque, and yeah, just just the little fun little color there. Um, it's next to the Blockbuster. It is. It was actually it used to be the Blockbuster until Blockbuster went out of business. Got it. And they decided, well, this is kind of perfect because we have all these shelves. We can put books on those shelves. Amazing. Yep. Uh, yeah. Fun fact: my hometown. That's exactly what happened. <laughs> <laughs> oh i love that that sounds right <laughs> all right uh so marcy you you enter the library would you like to uh is there i mean you want to look around at some books you want to you want to do some internet searching on the computers uh you want to talk to a librarian what is, what are you what is, what is your method of approach before we uh, get to rolling any dice here we should probably talk about what year it is as well yeah it is, that was my next question yeah it is yeah. late 2010s. Generic. Yeah. It's alternate universe. It's not our universe, but it's basically our universe just shifted slightly to the left. Okay. Okay. Not politically. I mean, like physically, it is le- the whole <laughs> earth is a foot left. If you overlaid our earth with their earth, they would always be slightly, slightly to, offset. Yes. Yeah, slightly to left. left relative to the sun. Interesting. Yeah. All right. Uh, Marcy has uh, very limited social skills, uh, so she is probably going to primarily uh, do her own research herself. Um, fully, like, kind of half wave to any librarian she sees at the front uh, desk, and she's going to walk past them to a computer chair, sit her little ass down, and start uh, typing. All right, what what skill would you like to roll as you are searching? I'm I'm assuming you're searching for the history of Florizon Manor. She's just going to get on the computer and just try to see if she can pull up any history in the Florizon Manor and see what rabbit hole she can dive down in regards to that. Okay. Uh go ahead and give me like a whatever computer's roll, a computer or search. You could do a search too. History would be great. My search is complete ass. Do, do search. Um, no, whatever you want. Okay. Uh, my computer science is a 65 versus my history is a 30. Uh, uh, do you want me to just roll computer science? Yeah, go ahead and roll or computer science. Or history give me a better roll. I mean, 
if your history were 65, I'd just give it to you. But um, computer science, this is your ability to craft the right uh, search terminology. So let's okay. go with okay. that. That is a 36. So, yeah, you do uh, a little bit of searching. It takes maybe 10 or 15 minutes for you to put together sort of this uh, vague history of uh, Florizon Manor. Uh, you find it's a, a majestic estate located in the heart of Louisiana countryside, uh, built in the late 1920s uh, or maybe the early 1910s, depending on what the source you're looking at. Uh, there's a suggestion of a rich and fascinating history passed down through generations of its owners, the, the Babineaux. Uh, the R Babineaux were a wealthy French Creole family who made their fortune in sugar plantations, or they made it in uh, automobile production, uh, or they made it in uh, a number of other various endeavors in the 19th and early 20th centuries. The patriarch of the family, Henri Babineau commissioned the construction of the Florizon Manor as a gift for his wife, Marie Ange. Uh, Manor was designed by a renowned architect from Paris or from Milan uh, and featured opulent and luxurious details throughout, including imported mar marble floors, crystal chandeliers, and intricate wood carvings. Uh, the gardens surrounding the manor were equally impressive with exotic plants and flowers. Uh, however, the completion of the manor coincided with the outbreak of World War II, or the addition of a second floor coincided with the outbreak of World War II. Again, this is a little here and there. And the Babineau family found themselves facing financial difficulties due to the strain of such a uh, opulent building and uh, some of the war's impact on the various industries in which they were involved. They were forced to sell off some of the land and assets, but they held on to the Florizon Manor with the surrounding land, which became a symbol of their resilience and perseverance during the difficult times. During the war, there were rumors that the manor served as a secret meeting place for members of the French resistance that had uh, extricated themselves from France uh, while fighting the Nazi occupation of France. Um, Babineau's family, who were deeply committed to the cause of French freedom and democracy, used their connections and resources to help smuggle weapons and supplies to the resistance fighters. Uh, after the war, the manor became a popular destination for wealthy visitors from all over who were drawn to luxurious amenities and charming southern hospitality. It played host to some notable guests, including politicians, uh, actors, and a, a rumored visit from Queen Elizabeth herself. This is wow. the more recent Queen Elizabeth. Uh, although in a different universe, Matt, I remind you, uh, where she is exactly the same, but she walks uh, every foot slightly Slight to, to the left, left of where. Yes. And she is buried in this universe now, slightly to the left of where Interesting. Uh, the Queen is buried. Today, uh, Florizon Manor uh, is mostly run down, um, having in the 70s, 80s, and 90s, um, been undergoing a, a continuous series of uh, sort of just sort of tragic heartbreaks. There were some uh, notable family deaths and uh, it being left in the, in the final hands of Lila Babineau, L I L A. Uh, she was the final owner um, and she recently passed and had moved away from Florizon Manor in her old age and was unable to upkeep it uh, along with its rich and luxurious history. Any questions? Yes, I would like to look more into some of those other endeavors, personally. Uh, in between the sugar plantations, automobile production, I just want to see if it was... Because that was around the 1920s. That's around the time of, like, the... Um, uh, fucking whatchamacallit. Alcohol was illegal, the Model right? T? Oh, pro prohibition. No, prohibition. Prohibition, yeah. Prohibition. Um... Yeah, I think uh, let's uh, for that you're gonna have to you're gonna have to roll again because this is just sort of and this would be let's let's go ahead and make a history roll and this will judge your ability to um, gauge the quality of uh, the the sources that you are getting this from. Alrighty, that is a thirty-seven under thirty, and uh, over thirty. Can I? Yeah, th sorry, thirty-seven over thirty. If you want, if you want, by the way, we are using luck in this edition yes. of Delta Green. The way luck works is I've given everyone a pool of luck and uh, they can spend it to buy down uh, their their results. This is a perfect chance for me to begin the train to Marcy running out of luck very swiftly. Uh, I'm going to do it. <laughs> All right. Then uh, with, with a successful history roll, what you find is that uh, it seems like 
they may have actually been involved in some sort of um, you you see from from some of the more uh, se- seemingly better researched uh, environments what you sources that you that you read you find that yeah they they probably had pretty big sugarcane fields but a lot of what they did was actually shipping um but it seemed like they didn't have a shipping company per se that there was sort of this uh shipping aspect to their sugar canes that uh as you read between the lines what you realize is that this is some sort of smuggling operation mm. uh and that it appears that they had a smuggling operation um probably running some illegal sugarcane operations as well as uh, alcohol during prohibition. And that may have been what set them up perfectly to help smuggle guns into France during World War II. Oh, so that is a hun- that is from the elaborate smuggling thing that kind of makes the uh, uh, French supply ring like ring a little bit more true. Yeah, that that seems to tie a nice little knot historically. Okay. Uh, and it seems that uh, as their their sugarcane wealth had to be sort of sold off and parsed out, that uh, that aspect of it was also sort of rolled into uh, other endeavors, and and that sort of died out with uh, the shrinking of the Babineau line in in the floor. Okay. Manner. Okay. Can I look into any more like uh, any any deaths in that manner, any relatives who died in that manner, or not even relatives, but guests who perished? Just any fucker that hit hit the final uh, final bell in that manner. Um, I think for this, let's uh, let's get a search, just a general okay. search roll. Um, yeah. We'll Alrighty, here's my uh, fantastic search. A 98 over uh, 20. <laughs> I mean, you run across, you know, obituaries of the Babineaux and, and that sort of thing. But it it's, they, they you know, nothing suspicious. It's just people you know, lived and died on that sort of thing. So Okay, okay. And with yeah. that um, information, I think that is going to wrap up this intro to City of Woe. We will see you next time. Yeah, oh boy, time. it started. Goodbye. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in to Chaos Springs Eternal. This is season one, City of Woe. This is episode one. We're dropping three episodes today. Go ahead and check the show notes for all our social media information. And if you could, please leave a rating and review in iTunes, whatever podcast app you're using. iTunes is kind of the big one, you know, when it comes to SEO and all that sort of stuff. We really appreciate you taking the chance to listen. Shout us out on social media. Well, we'll make sure to like and retweet whatever you say. Thank you again. And until next time, let's go comprehend some uncomprehendable horrors.